Driven Wild Rub Ball. Tim puts the scope mounted Aimpoint Acro through its paces as Kai puts the boot in. We've got high tech here. It's Kai tech, not high tech. <laughs> <laughs> Are you serious? Shotgun survey results. What are the most popular brands, models, and how often do we treat ourselves to a new one? Yet again, thanks to gamekeepers, chicks are hatching on grouse moors. We have news, we have hunting YouTube. Welcome to Field Sports Britain. Hunting can be unpredictable. Sometimes the shot is at your feet. Sometimes it's across a valley. So what do you do if you're presented with both at the same time? Golfers have lots of options. They have one of these, they have one of these, or indeed one of these. Hunters, on the other hand, have very few options to take that shot. We can't turn up with a caddy or a range of rifles to cover all shooting situations. However, we got something here that can offer you two clubs at the very same time. So this is the, uh, the very, very well-known and well-used Aimpoint Micro H2. And that plonks on top of rifle, you just use that for, for most running targets. Very, very capable. But recently just come out, it's called the Acro. The Acro C1. Look at the size of that, it's tiny. Look, it's just a bit bigger than my thumb. What this film's all about is maybe just explaining, demonstrating the limitations, but also why this little red dot sight could actually transform somebody's shooting. Aimpoint's Acro started life on a pistol, but the military wing of the business since developed it to mount on your rifle scope. But where? If I have it up here somewhere, that seems the most logical place to have it, or I can fold it down to the side at right angles. Okay, so once again we have to decide whether it's better up a vertical or down to the side. And this is the actual plate itself. I've decided to actually stick it at more or less 90 degrees. And that just sits like that. That's it. That's it. So it has a little uh, plate here, which you screw in, but it just sits on that adapter plate, screw it up tight, and that's how it works. It is as simple as that. Now you might well ask, when am I going to need that? Well, we're going to work through some plausible scenarios at Tim's field tester range, from Driven Boar to Amorous Row. Plus, Tim has already experienced a hunting situation where an acro and scope combo could have been just the ticket. I can remember, David, we were on that rock face and the, 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 uh, the deer were coming over the top towards us, and um, so therefore I was on um, I, I don't know what scope, I was on two or three pack, they're about 20, 30 yards yeah. away. Yeah. You know, so therefore they were just coming over the rocks and it's like, and I was looking at the, the scope trying to find out where they were and they're coming over, bang, bang, bang. And then, the famous shot, you shouted to me, said, Tim, there's a fellow over there. And I swung around and there was a deer 200 yards away, running Got at it. full gallop. Got it. See, excuse my French, but bloody hell. We got it. We got it. Okay, so therefore that application is a classic example, whereas I would have the red dot for shooting these, these game coming within, say, 30, 40 yards, even less. I can just pick them up very, very easily, yeah? But the longer distance one, I could just go back onto the scope, and the scope would probably be at a six or seven pad, for instance, I don't know. And I'd be more than happy to take that shot. To make things interesting, Tim is going to see how well he can group shots using a scope on high magnification and the Acro, which has no magnification. The next thing to do is have an accuracy test. Zero to 150 metres, zero to about 80 metres. I'm going to shoot three from the scope, three through the aim point red dot sight, and see what happens. And be very interesting to just compare the grouping, perhaps.
Well, to be honest, I'm really quite surprised. Left-hand side here is uh, shooting it through a standard hunting optic. So it's a Leica 1.8 uh, to 12 by 50 scope. So 223, um, I expect we've got maybe an inch and a bit of our of, of group there. It's one, two, three. So respectable, I wasn't actually kind of concentrating too much. So it's just, just a straightforward shot. But really surprisingly, on the right hand side here is three shots taken through the aim point red dot sight, the aggro. Now, one, two, three. Two and a bit, two and a half inch grouping. That is quite astounding actually. So this is 100 meters. I'm not aiming it, I'm just sitting it there. So, I don't know, I'm, I am so surprised. It's, it's got me thinking actually, you know, can I use this red dot sight for shooting, you know, deer 100 meters for instance? I don't know, but I'm sorry, but guys, this is perfectly accurate enough to Good. take a beast. Already the acro is showing promise, but surely it's on a driven hunt that it will come into its own. Unfortunately, the chances of finding a willing running wild boar in East Sussex, although not impossible, are slim. Finding a willing Kayap Bryn, a slope with backstop and some tyres are far easier. He is our trap operator and trap all at the same time. Okay, this is in true Field Sports Britain style. Uh, we're going to try some simulated wild boar, running wild boar targets. Um, I've got no idea how it's going to work out, but it's, it's got to be worth a crack anyway. But the most important thing is, is got a, I've got a, a, a pocket full of ammo, and we keep on doing it until we actually find them. But uh, uh, we've got a young Kai up there who's going uh, to roll the, the uh, tyres down. But yeah, we'll have a go, guys. I mean, why not? It's a bit better than a a straightforward uh, running ball target. We'll just roll them down the around the field and see what happens. Okay, go. Nice and steady. <laughs> there we go, there we go, there we go. Three shots on that. Rolling. <laughs> <laughs> it worked, didn't it? Yeah. Yeah, give us some Welsh welly. Okay. <laughs> you serious? <laughs> you think being Welsh, he'd be, it, he'd be good at rugby and kicking IQ. something probably, but that was pathetic. Absolutely pathetic. What do you think he was going to do? Just like, such a wimp. I'm a runner, you... not a kicker. The lockdown's not being kind on Kai, is it? <laughs> actually, I didn't want to say it, actually, David. I didn't want to say anything whatsoever, but definitely a little bit porky, isn't he? Okay. I'm doing my Joe Wicks exercise. <laughs> really? Really? Yeah, yeah, in your sleep, mate. Okay, let's go. Put some, back, put some effort into it. Oh my god. Oh. <laughs> no! Oh! <laughs> have that, have that. That's a charging ball. It's not as easy as it looks, I'm just telling you that now. <laughs> yeah, rolling a tyre. <laughs> well, yeah? I was about to say, he's actually it's wearing a couple as well. <laughs> That's true, I need to get my technique right. That's right. Let's go back down then, drag him back up the hill. <laughs> when you first, you're upright, you're vertical, then you got, then it's running ball, then you've got to just twist it, and that first bit of twist does feel a bit alien, but once you pick up the red dot, it, you know, the, 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 the rifle could be any position really, because all you're doing is actually just watching that or just seeing where the red dot is. So yes, for a start, you think, oh my goodness, I've got to twist it, but once you've got the red dot, the red dot just, you know, I'm, I'm actually, I'm actually my I'm focusing actually on the tire, and that red dot's kind of go yeah 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 yeah. And as soon as it gets up to in the middle of that tire, I pull the trigger because we're only shooting about 20, 30 meters away, so there's very little lead needed at all. But uh, yeah, for a start, it feels a bit odd. But once you're on it, I dare say after practice, it comes second nature. Twist, bang, straight onto it. So, do you think the Holland Holland's shooting cinema have got something to worry about? Oh, definitely. 
Oh, definitely. Yeah, we've got we've got high tech here. Yeah, uh, all we need all we need is a high tech and a bit more a fitter uh, just, starter. Just, just say something here. It's not it's Kai tech, not high tech. <laughs> Kai tech. It's a bit of fun. It, it, we're making a point. It's all about actually just moving targets, and uh, just just to demonstrate actually it does work. And that's the most important thing. To take what you will from it, it does work. How would you have coped with doing this, using the scope with that particular scenario? Is it? Well, with a red dot, your both eyes are open. So I've got full peripheral vision. I can see everything going around me, and I've got that. I can see where it is, and I can track it. But as soon as I go in my scope, it's actually harder trying to acquire that target. So it takes more time to get onto it. Once I'm actually onto it, and I've got the flow, it's actually reasonably straightforward. But it's not, it's that, it's that acquisition of target, that, that quickness is not there with, with, a, with a rifle scope, unless you obviously um, hugely practiced at doing that, but uh, it, is, it is very, very different. Scenario two is a close-up row. In the past, we have filmed Roy barking at a buck coming to the call to stop it in its tracks so that he doesn't lose the animal in his scope. Can the acro stop Roy barking? Okay, I'm going to run through a typical stalking, row stalking situation using Tom's targets. There am I, I've been squeaking away and I found a really nice looking roebuck. Check him through the scope and let's look at his head. Oh yeah, he looks lovely. Great, great, great. Yep, I think that's the beast I want today. But unfortunately he just wanders away. So he's out of sight. Ah, oh, lost it. But also I hear to my right, there's something coming towards me. So I'm going to be very, very careful looking around. Okay, I've got two situations here. I use my sticks, mount up, and take that quick so shot. The problem I've got is I'm on 10 power, <laughs> and it's actually took me several seconds to actually find the roebuck, because he's actually stuck in the grass over there. Yeah? So, that, so my shot would have taken several seconds to, uh, to, to take, and by which time he would have cut off anyway. Or, get rid of the sticks, very quickly acquire the target, bang, quick as that. And the reason why it's so much quicker, is I'm actually focusing on the roebuck. So my eyes are on the roebuck, all I'm doing is bringing that red dot up, and as soon as that dead red dot is near that kill zone, and the kill zone on a roebuck is what, that big? Because very often you call a roe deer and he comes bundling towards you and you try and say, oh my goodness, oh my goodness, it's stop, 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 stop. And of course, most people tend to be over magged, yeah? So very often actually I'd prefer to stay on low mag, but actually a lot of people tend to be sitting around six to eight. When that roe buck gets within about 30 metres, suddenly this huge great beast in front of you, you think, oh my goodness, I've got someone to take a shot with this. I'm, I'm magged up, I'm shaking away as well, but with a red dot, it's one-to-one -one magnification, so there's no magnification at all. There's no shake. I'm constantly looking at that roebuck all the time. Red dot comes up, and I just pull the trigger. So, two very different applications of optics. Finally, Tim is going to alternate between a variety of Tom's targets, scope and acro, both in use. All I'm going to try to show you is, is, is basically a variety of shooting off sticks and also using the aim point. I'm just going to blow a load so of ammunition off. and see what happens. So I'm just playing, demonstrating, take away what you will. Okay, so here it goes. Okay, got a file buck over there with a scope. That's a dead file buck. Okay, I've got Monty over there, I'll probably use a scope for that. A dead Monty. Okay, there's a pig there. Oh, dead pig. There's a row over there. I'll probably use my sticks for the row. Dead row. There's a fox in the grass there. Dead fox. Oh, there's a row over the corner there. About 80 yards away. I'll use the sticks for that. Dead row. Okay. It's always really good fun to actually burn some ammunition, but it just shows you how you can use them in it together. Yeah? I use the scope with the with the red dot. And if you notice, it was very, very simple. I wasn't having to turn anything completely to, to be completely on to the right angles, flicking backs and forwards. 
I think it's absolutely brilliant. So uh, for that situation, I think it's very, very good. It, it may not be a common situation you'll be in, but quite honestly, <laughs> 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 have That's pig and everything else. But, you know, but yeah, it just shows you what you can do perhaps with a red dot site anyway. So the application is there, whether it's justifiable, I've got no idea. But, but imagine if you're a person who, you know, in a brawl, for instance, who do shoot pig, so, you know, you'll have that situation. You know, we've been out, how many times have you been out deer stalking or whatever, and you suddenly find a deer very close to you, or is a fox very, very close to you? Quite honestly, it's no problem. I just turn sideways, boof. You know, turn sideways, I'm still watching the animal with both eyes. That red dot's on the kill zone, not aiming, it's on the kill zone, pull the trigger. It's, you know. So I think it's basically up to you guys to decide actually whether it's a toy or not. Is it a gimmick? I don't think so. I've proven to it. It's accurate. It's quick. Yeah? Reactional. Yeah? Is it proper hunting? Probably is. Things aren't nice and close to you. Yeah. Have a lower mag, get closer to the beast. Proper stalking, perhaps. I'll let you decide that, but uh, one thing for sure, I'm going to have another go with this. Tim ends up quite taken with the acro. It's a new discipline, a new technique, but when you're hunting, it's unpredictable, reaction shots, and at different ranges, it could increase your shooting opportunities. For more information about the Acro, plus Aimpoint's new piggyback ring mount system for different scopes, go to aimpoint.com or contact info at aimpoint.se. Thank you, Tim, and thank you, Kai, for your tyre flinging skills, and I hope we'll soon be able to see the acro in use when Lord Lupton of the Row Call takes to the fields during the row rut in July. Now from Red Dots to, well, little pink eyes and no conversation, it's David on the Field Sports Channel, News Stump. This is Field Sports Channel News. Chris Packham's anti-shooting group Wild Justice is celebrating. A judge has approved its request for a judicial review into the release of game birds on nature conservation sites. According to a post by Mark Avery on the group's blog, the court hearing will be held before the end of October. Avery chirped that if they are successful, the legal challenge will have big impacts on pheasant and red-legged partridge shooting in 2021. In April, DEFRA asked the court to refuse the group's request describing it as vexatious and pointless and asked to be awarded its costs. In a joint statement, Basque, Countryside Alliance, the Game Farmers Association and National Gamekeepers Organisation said a review is misdirected in terms of the law and serves no purpose. As we reported last week, Natural England's unofficial ban on wildfowling is starting to bite. It is refusing to give consent for wildfowl shooting on the Humber estuary. Shooters blame Natural England red tape for the move, which comes after Wild Justice threatened the government with legal action over licences. That prompted Natural England to suspend consents on what it calls European protected sites, many of which are on the UK's coasts, until it has sent civil servants to assess the sites, which it can't afford to do. Shooters fear that Natural England could roll out a ban on shooting on all European protected sites or within 300 metres of them, which it's already done with some of the general licences. Now, wildfowling clubs should not suffer the consequences of Natural England's own failings. It's wholly unacceptable. And BAC is using every resource at our disposal to challenge that process. Our priority at this moment in time is to secure a positive outcome for those clubs affected ahead of the coming season. Hunt saboteurs are now targeting golf courses in an apparent bid for support and cash. North Dorset Hunt Sabs issued a call to action on Facebook telling people to spam a local golf club with phone calls because of its rabbit pest control program. They've asked the course to stop offering the easy way or the hard way, meaning Sabs will deploy to prevent shooting if the club refuses to comply. The group claims two locals confronted pest controllers in a standoff that lasted about half an hour before the shooters left. At the same time, Wild Act, another SAB group, is calling for all golf clubs to be turned into parks and rewilded sanctuaries and says golfers are overprivileged, usually significantly physically unfit individuals. Gamekeepers in Scotland are considering forming a political party. 
The move comes after lawmakers banned the unlicensed culling of mountain hares and made them a protected species. Scottish Gamekeepers Association chairman Alex Hogg says a lack of control will harm the species and it is a bad law made by people it won't affect. He says his organisation has for months been mulling the idea of forming a party to ensure the working countryside is represented better and the possibility of fielding candidates in list seats. Paul McCartney has teamed up with PETA to try to get UK school children to stop eating meat. The former Beatle, who already runs the organisation Meat Free Monday, insists Britain's school food standards are outdated. Petter and the music legend want the government to remove mandatory servings of meat and dairy from school menus and allow children to choose whatever nutritional requirements they think they need. Petter says vegan school dinners will be served at 180 schools in Leeds and French schools must now serve at least one meat-free meal per week. In a joint statement, Paul and his daughters Mary and Stella McCartney claim no one needs to eat meat. An expat has caught the biggest mirror carp ever landed by a British angler. Martin Davidson, who emigrated to South Africa from Leicester, snagged a 112 pound 8 ounce hulk, plus another weighing 101 pounds during a trip to Hungary. The big fish set a world record when it was six ounces heavier last year, and a Dutchman caught it. Davidson was fishing at the Euro Aqua Lake, where he also reeled in several whoppers approaching 100 pounds during two weeks of non stop fishing. Researchers in South Africa say that a growing number of private landowners are getting out of rhinos. About 40% of white rhinos live on private land. The escalating costs of protecting them from poachers is spurring the deinvestment, not helped by coronavirus. Researchers at Stellenbosch University surveyed 171 private rhino owners' responses. 28% say they are deinvesting, 57% say it's business as usual, and 15% are investing in more rhinos. Most owners support the rhino horn trade to fund conservation, yet international trade is still banned. Already we've been seeing the disinvestment because of this significant cost, but now of course they also aren't seeing revenues from particularly tourism and uh, trophy hunting with the pandemic. Some obviously are going to be able to to cope with the lack of revenue uh, more than others. America's hunters have won a hard-fought victory that will help African wildlife. The US Court of Appeals in Washington upheld the US Fish and Wildlife Service's new case-by-case -case permitting policy for importing endangered and threatened wildlife. The decision ends six years of litigation efforts by Safari Club International and the National Rifle Association to scrap a countrywide import ban imposed by Barack Obama's administration. It threatened conservation efforts in the African countries affected. SCI's lawyers argued the FWS should recognise the conservation benefits of hunting and relevant safari operators. An animal rights activist has died after a pig truck hit her outside an abattoir in Canada. Regan Russell campaigned for Toronto Pig Save. There are reports Russell was trying to feed the pigs while the truck was still moving. The 65-year-old's death came two days after the province raised fines for trespassing on farms and food factories and made it illegal to block trucks carrying farm animals. An Australian animal rights activist has vowed to keep terrorising farms. Charlize Rainiers was convicted of unlawfully entering agricultural land in disguise to interfere with business and commit an offence after she trespassed on a farm outside Sydney in January. The farm was recovering from devastating bushfires when members of a group called Lost Earthlings raided it. She insists it was the right thing to do because meat-related businesses need to be exposed. In 2019, Rainiers was one of nine activists who raided an abattoir in Goulburn and chained themselves to a conveyor belt. New Zealand plans to eradicate its tar population if a new consultation is to be believed. The country's Department of Conservation has released its draft operational tar control plan for next year. The New Zealand Tar Foundation says it would be a catastrophe for a viable tar hunting resource, especially in the national parks where so many people enjoy hunting. Thanks to Pell Homseth for the story. And finally, a Russian woman seems to have started a new social media trend. Ekaterina Sabatina has posted a video on Instagram of her dancing with her shotgun at a shooting range in Kazan in the Republic of Tatarstan. Field Sports News is unsure of the exact rules at shooting clubs in the semi-autonomous Russian region, but hope gun dancing doesn't catch on in Britain. The post prompted a copycat video from Australia by our friend Bruce, who runs a shooting range in Perth. After that, we really hope it doesn't catch on.
You are now to date with Field Sports Channel News. Stalking the stories, fishing for facts. Thank you, David, and there is more news on our website. Go and have a look at that by following the link in the description below. And you can also join the Field Sports Nation there, for it is the Field Sports Nation that pays for our news. It's the advertisers who pay for the big features. It's the viewers, you guys, who stump up for stuff which we hope really changes people's minds about shooting sports. Field Sports Nation, it's on the website. Now, shotgun survey results time. There are hundreds of thousands of shotguns in cabinets owned by you lot all over the UK, all over the world. And you've told us what you buy, how often, and for how much. Here are the results. We put our field tester survey in front of you in March 2020 while lots of people were twiddling their thumbs in coronavirus lockdown and three and a half thousand people got back to us. Our shotgun survey is our biggest for responses. More than 100 brands, nearly 200 models and the opinion of 1,300 shotgun owners. So what do you shoot? Put together everything that shoots shot shells over and under, side-by-sides, pumps and semi-autos and two companies dominate. In fifth place comes the Beretta 687. In fourth, it's the Browning B725. In third, the Beretta 686. In second place is the Browning B525. And the most popular shotgun among our viewers is the Beretta Silver Pigeon. Now, that doesn't mean Beretta and Browning win every prize. We asked for all kinds of views from you, and you told us that for customer service. The winning shotgun company is Perazzi. For reliability, you put Turkish gun maker ATA in first place. For value for money, you went for Lanba. For fit, it's Perazzi again, and the gun maker that makes the best looking guns is, you said, and I think this one will come as a big surprise, Benelli. Now, you have these lovely guns. What do you shoot with them? It's a pretty even split. With nearly a quarter of you shooting mainly pheasant and partridge, 20% shooting mainly clays, 17% on duck, whack whack, down to 10% on pigeons. We even worked out that your favourite make for pheasant and partridge as a proportion of its users is Caesar Garini. In the same way, top honours for pigeons is split between Benelli and Blaza. May have to thank Mr Crow for that. And good grouse shooters prefer a Perazzi. You certainly hang on to your guns. Lanber made the highest proportion of guns in your hands that are over 20 years old. Those of you with the newest guns choose ATA with Blaza close behind. And finally, how much do you pay? Well, no surprise that Perazzi is the most expensive of the guns you told us about. But would you like to know which two makes you are most likely to have inherited? It's AYA, of course it's AYA, and it's Winchester, the thinking cowboy's shotgun. There's a ton more information about shotguns here and you can find it on the field tester pages of our website. That film is available on our new Field Tester channel, which is a sister channel to Field Sports Channel on YouTube. And you can go there by following the link in the description below and you can subscribe and see other films about other product categories and other reviews. And for in-depth reviews in text and video, you can find that on our website. Again, go to the link in the description below. Look for Field Tester. That really is good to see. And thank you to the Field Sports Nation for paying for that again. We had a camera guy up on uh, a moor for three days last week and they didn't come cheap. Uh, the film we produced last week ended up on the mail website, the Daily Mail website, so that's very good news. We're hoping this footage will do even better. Now from Britain's uplands to the wider world of hunting and shooting on YouTube it is Hunting YouTube. <laughs> This is Hunting YouTube, which aims to show the best hunting and shooting videos that YouTube has to offer. Michael Zama of Valt and Vilt TV sends me his latest. He's off for a big roebuck in marshy country. Staying on large deer, Peter Jones from County Deer Stalking lets me know about his new film where former soldier Tom takes a 28-point red stag. In the Netherlands, Tok Portfeet is knocking down corvids in a farmyard. It's in Dutch, but the action is easy to follow. We have showcased Country Boy on Cam's gun reviews before. Here's his latest, a look at the Hauer 1500 in 223. 
James West, catapult shooter, gets in touch about this film, a hunting outing and a trick shot with his Evo slingshot from Caddyshack. The Kiwi Adventure Time channel is on New Zealand's west coast for a pig hunt and within minutes of going into the forest, the dogs are onto one. Anyone thinking about goose shooting will enjoy this from the Mackenzie River Delta in Canada's Northwest Territories. RJ McLeod 21 is goose shooting with his two kids who turn out to be great retrievers. And finally, in the week, well-meaning people took down Teddy Roosevelt's statue from outside a museum of natural history. It's worth revisiting this 90-minute film from 1989. The great Robin Hurt retreads the adventures from Roosevelt's African game trails book even using the former US president's rifle. That's it for this week. I've put all these films into a playlist for you. Click on the iSymbol top right or check this film's description. If you have a YouTube film you would like us to pop into the weekly top eight, email me the link charlie at fieldsportschannel.tv. Well, that's it for this week. If you haven't done so, please whiz over to our website, fieldsportschannel.tv. You can click to like us there on Facebook and on Instagram. You can follow us on Twitter, subscribe to us on YouTube. And of course, you can pop your email into our register page and we'll send you our newsletter about this show. Field Sports Britain is out every Wednesday, 7 p.m. UK time. And this has been Field Sports Britain. I'll see you next week. Good hunting, good shooting, good fishing. We're out of lockdown and goodbye. Goodbye.